Presentation to the hair, Yeah. Okay. Greetings to all. Welcome to Third Tech Talk hosted by Applied Physics Alumni Association. Hello, I am Subhajit Pal, a proud alumnus of 2012 batch. I hold a dual degree in electrical engineering, have completed my both BTEC and MTEC from the Applied Physics Department at University of Calcutta. For the past six years, I have been actively engaged as an assistant professor in electrical engineering department at the University of Engineering and Management, Kolkata, a private university. I am deeply honored to have been selected as a moderator of this esteemed TikTok program. Hosting a TikTok webinar focused on diverse industrial knowledges holds great significance. It serves a vital information both for professionals and enthusiasts, enabling them to remain abreast of the latest development in their respective fields. This interactive session cultivates the sharing of knowledge, ignite innovation, and empower individuals to make well-informed decision within dynamic industrial area. Today's topic, the role of instrumentation and control in a glassware manufacturing process. Allow me to introduce today's esteemed speaker, Miganko Bosch, Mr. Miganko Boshak. A 1974 batch alumnus, Miganko Boshak started his career with Instrumentation Limited, Kota, as a management trainee, served there for 15 years in various positions then worked for Petrofils Cooperative Limited, Onkuleshwar, Gujarat, for two years as a manager instrumentation. Later joined Piramil Glass Limited, Kosamba, Surat, Gujarat, as a senior management, senior manager instrumentation. And after serving the company for about 19 years in various roles in engineering service functions, retired as a general manager engineering service. Since 2015, serving as a part-time advisor on industrial risks and safety management system, presently he, reefed, he lives in a uh, Baruch, Gujarat. I hope all of you are ready, sir. Please take it further from here. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Today's topic is the role of Tiandai in a glassware manufacturing process. However, I will mainly concentrate on the container glass manufacturing process because glassware is a very wide range of activities. Let me first introduce about the different types of glasses. There are mainly three types of glass. One is type 1 glass, that is called borosilicate glass. The third one is type 3 glass, that is a soda lime glass. And the type 2 is basically soda lime glass treated with sulfur. 
surface treated with sulfur that has a special application now if i come to the raw materials used for making glass that include silica sand or quartz sand along with mixture of limestone sodium soda ash rather sodium carbonate soda ash and other natural substances like dolomite feldspar etc in addition to this boron or boric boric acid is used for specifically for type 1 glass that is borosilicate glass besides all these the collet collet is a special terminology used in a glass industry that is nothing but the crushed bottles crushed bottles can be acquired from internally generated rejected bottles number 2 it can be procured from the scrap vendors also what does collet do the melting point of collet is very low compared to the virgin raw materials normally if you use only the virgin raw materials it the temperature of melting will be around 650 plus 650 degree centigrade plus however if we add collet to it the melting temperature reduces to about 515 to 1650 as you know more the temperature the life of the furnace is compromised so addition of collet not only reduces the cost of the virgin raw materials number 2 it increases the life of the furnace because normally a furnace starts its campaign period and it cannot be stopped or shut down for another 10 to 12 years when a relining takes place it is a very long long period so the collet plays a very important role the percentage of collet added to the virgin raw materials varies with the different kinds of glass and the different requirement we will also come across a terminology that is called gob gob is nothing but a cylindrical shaped molten viscous solid you can say solid of a specific weight according to the uh, according to the requirement of the particular job the weight of the gob determines the weight of the bottle it it remains the same next slide now we'll i'll come to the overview of the glassware manufacturing process as you can see from the diagram it starts with the batch house where the raw material is prepared and handled next comes the furnace that is melting furnace wherein the melting of the raw material takes place we call it batch raw material complete raw material is called a batch next there is a there is another furnace who is which is connected with the melter which basically takes care of the refining and homogenizing of the glass melter cannot refine the glass or homogenize it whereas when we produce the bottle we want a refined glass completely refined glass sufficiently homogenized and the temperature of the melting temperature other 1600 degree centigrade or so is brought down to 1200 degree centigrade in the distributor chamber of the furnace next is the four heart before i tell you about the four heart 
let me tell you another important thing when a furnace is designed it is designed for say more than one forming machines right a furnace can have two forming machines can have three forming machines even more than that now according to the number of the forming machines the number of folders are determined normally one forming machine requires one folder however there is an exception to in certain cases there is there are two machines together which are called tandem machines which are fed by a single folder that is also possible however for the sake of this discussion we will consider there is one folder for one machine means one furnace have has one distributor but multiple folders and multiple forming machines in the forming machines the bottle forming process is taken care of i will come later what is that the forming machines are called basically individual sections machines the forming machines can have should have rather i should not say can have many sections similar sections it can be a eight section machine it can be a 10 section machine it can be a similar 12 section machines or maybe more the bottle forming takes place through some mold equipment and the process followed for forming are two types one is called blow and blow another is called press and blow blow and blow system is being used for the narrow neck bottles however the press and blow method is used for the wide mouth bottles like jars glass jars now the bottles so produced are hot it is at as hot as maybe 500 degree centigrade or 400 degree centigrade it is now brought to a to another furnace that is called annealing furnace or annealing layer as they call it wherein the bottles are brought up to a temperature level of around say 500 600 degree centigrade and then slowly brought down to 100 degree centigrade or so in this annealing layer the stress relieving of bottles is taken place normally the hot bottles are brittle why it is brittle because during the process of forming the bottles there are huge number of stress and stays going on through the hot bottles because of that quick temperature differences happening inside the bottle then there are difference in the surface temperatures of the bottle inner surface is hotter than the outer surface so make it to make it uniform temperature the annealing layer is used where after which the bottle becomes hard 100% hard if you can if you drop the bottle from above it will not break after the layer layer operation takes place for around 1 hour or so after the layer the checking and quality inspection system checks all the bottles almost 100% however there are certain checks which are, which are uh not 100% check like weight of the bottles external dimensions and all but there are number of defects inside the bottle which cannot be done by the naked eye it is it is gone through various inspection machines and 
finally the bottles which are defective are rejected by the machines itself then of course the final packing and dispatch there are another facility called decoration facility as per the requirement of the customer these bottles can be decorated also that is a separate facility not a continuous process throughout this uh, graphic where in the coloring painting frosting coating labeling etc takes place that is completely different facility altogether next slide sujit next next come to the batch house process first of all all the raw materials are brought say via truck or whatever mode of conveyance is there in the batch house and they are lifted up of the batch house and fed into different silos which are identified for each raw material the silos are at the top of the batch house then comes the dosing weighing and transportation of these batches now the glass technologists who are supposed to be the experts on the glass they already give the recipe of particular glass requirement for their furnace recipe of different raw materials and this recipe are fed to the plc and plc they are fed sequentially through a plc according to the sequence of feeding of the recipe and the weight of each raw material in the recipe the each raw material are sequentially brought down to oa beans respective oa beans they are they are weighed and brought down to brought down to conveyors or bucket elevators for further transport of the raw materials all the raw materials come down on the back on the conveyors and brought to the furnace wherein not brought to the furnace exactly it is brought to a mixture wherein a homogeneous mixture of the raw materials is taken place and after that the collet is also added to that mixture and finally through conveyor belts or bucket elevators the batch is taken to a hopper that is called dock silo or a melter hopper now dock silo why dock silo is it is another typical name in a glass plant actually the batch is fed into a furnace through a small block that is a small block similar to the ones where in the dogs normally stay so the batch charger feeds the batch through this small opening that's why it is called a dog house now above the dog house the dog silo exists and the batch is stored throughout the day for the total capacity of the furnace so 100 tpd tons per day capacity plant the batch has to be stored for the whole day consumption that is 100 tons the automation i have already talked it is basically a plc based system next slide now i will come to the furnace overview this is the structure of the furnace if you can see the melter is shown in uh, red almost red right on the left side of the melter 
there is a regenerator regenerator is nothing but the free heater or an economizer after melting the flue gas generated after melting is holding a huge amount of heat which is around a temperature of around 3 1300 degrees centigrade to 1350 degrees centigrade or so and nobody wants to waste this energy so what they you do this is being done in almost all the plants in a thermal power plant it is called economizer now in the what is the regenerator construction regenerator is separated by a wall there is a, there are two compartments in it these two compartments are made of certain refractory blocks which is which are called checker blocks the checker blocks are having a typical a particular uh, property that is it heats up first and it cools down also first in the beginning say on the right hand side uh, chamber the flue gas is flowing through it and the next cycle what happens the secondary air secondary air passes through the left regenerator it gets heated up almost heated up to around 1200 degrees centigrade then the firing takes place during this period of operation the other chamber the right hand side chamber is being used for passage of the flue gas in the next cycle of operation the secondary air passes through this second chamber and gets heated up so there is a damper reversal that we call it reversal damper for the secondary blower once the right side gets opened and the next uh, next cycle of operation the left side gets opened and this reversal damper cycle is determined predetermined it is around say 20 to 30 degree 30 minute during this 20 to 30 minute operation one chamber gets heated up and the secondary air passes to the other chamber and then the next cycle of operation the other chamber gets heated up and the cold air cold secondary air flows to the first chamber and finally the gas burner and secondary airs are fed to the ratio controller with lead lag circuit lead lag circuit means when the gas has to be reduced when the firing has to be reduced the gas reduces first it air follows it and when the temperature has to be increased or firing has to be increased the air is increased first then the gas is increased so always there is an excess air maintained inside the furnace it is a minimal amount of excess air that's why the pressure con pressure uh, melter pressure is always maintained at positive say point, point 0.25 to 0.5 or so millimeter of water pH after the melter the distributor is shown I told you about the distributor and it is connected with the melter through a most very small portion that is called throat that's why it is called throat in fact in a melter no refining, no homogenizing of the molten glass takes place. However, the distributor is built in such a fashion that the refining of the glass and homogenization of it takes place in the distributor and temperature is brought down to about 1200 degrees centigrade or so. Now, what is refining? 
there can there can be certain impurities inside the glass that will settle down at the bottom number 1 number 2 there can be <coughs> air bubbles trapped inside the glass those air bubbles are escaped in this distributor so get glass is almost homogenized in distributor then there are four hours connected with the distributor in this drawing there are four folders have been shown these four folders are catering to four different forming machines now four different forming machines can have different jobs running on these machines different jobs are having different requirement of temperature or viscosity Visco viscosity determined by the temperature viscosity depends on the temperature viscosity of the glass so in one four hour say the conditioning temperature it is it where it in the sorry in the, in the four hour the thermal conditioning of glass takes place according to the requirement of that particular job running in that particular four hour now what is thermal conditioning we have to brought down to a particular temperature required for that forming of the bottle say in one four hour the bottle requires it the gob temperature should be at 1200 degree centigrade or so so the conditioning temperature has to be maintained at 1200 degree centigrade these are all automatically controlled except the melter temperature melter temperature cannot be automatically controlled because i have i have shown you that there is a reversal damper and there is a reversal cycle after every 20 to 30 minutes when this change over takes place the firing inside the melter is zero off completely off hence there should not be any automatic control of temperature inside the melter however the fuel flow and the secondary air flow are controlled separately and thereafter there is a ratio control circuit and all in a distributor however there is a automatic temperature control and the four hours also are having automatic temperature controls the side view is simple it is the side view same thing i am not going into that this is a very important parameter the glass level next next slide next next ha huh. the glass level measurement glass level plays a very important role as far as the weight of the bottle is concerned the weight depends on the glass level now the melter operator maintains the glass level at certain uh glass level say the glass level is 20 meter sorry 20 feet but or say 20 meter i am just giving an example abrupt example now the glass level control controls the level within plus minus 1 mm for that first the glass level measurement takes place that is takes place at any point in a distributor or a folder which are accessible furnace it is not possible furnace is a big uh, vessel that is not possible it is taken because the level is maintained throughout normally the glass level measurement system is installed along the width of the distributor one side of that width there is a laser emitting diode which gives a laser beams to a hole inside the distributor 
and the molten glass level at that point of time functions as the meter and the reflected beam is captured on a camera and it is processed accordingly this is the measurement next slide so we get next slide now how the how the controller functions there is a glass level controller i have i have already said that we have to maintain the level that 20 is the reference level right and i have to maintain plus minus 1 mm with respect to that reference level so we have to feed the set point as the reference level zero zero is the set point and the measured value as we get from the camera processed process ah. value rather that is fed as the process value in the controller and the output that is the error signal goes to a batch charger panel batch charger is what which feeds the batch inside the dog house and that error signal will determine the speed of the batch charger accordingly if the level is above the reference level the speed of the batch charger has to be reduced and if the level is down the speed of the batch charger has to be increased that is how the glass level measurement and control functions it is basically a three element control why three element we have seen only two element here the level and the uh, feed feed means the charging but the important parameter we have forgotten that is the glass draw the glass is drawn in different machines and according to these draws the level changes so the draw is the very important parameter however we cannot take the input of the draw in the controller because the draws are changing on our hour on our basis because of so many constraints so many things happening in the machines in some of the machines drop change is going on in some of the machines the mold change is going on in some of the machines the section is stopped because of some breakdown so that is basically a disturbed situation we cannot take a disturbed this is noise in fact we cannot we cannot take the feedback from this this is not uh, this is not a standard for measurement the level has to be the standard for measurement so although it is basically a three level control but we are controlling the level only next slide so ji i have talked about uh, talked about this in earlier slide earlier slides the distributor and fora temperature control this is a simple feedback control loop i i don't think this has to be explained in detail it is self explanatory the drawing is self explanatory let me come to the second next slide compressed air pressure control now compressed air pressure where it is used it is used in the forming machines it is used as a air for movement of machine mechanisms as well as the blowing blowing activity blowing activity inside the glass in a hot condition so there are two types of air one is the high pressure air high pressure air is used for the blowing purpose normally the high pressure air maintains at 40 psi plus minus 0.5 psi and the low pressure air, air is used for the 
movement of mechanisms it is maintained at around 30 psi plus minus 0.5 psi the 30 psi and 40 psi are not standards it can change according to the requirement of the production and the loop is very simple loop it is also a closed loop control system i don't think it is to be explained to all of you next slide this is the most important thing in a electronic system electronic is machine is machine i have already explained it is the forming machine or individual section machine in short it is is machine the electro electronic system comprises of so many controls that is plc based control in fact the feeder feeder control servo feeder then servo gob distributor which distributes the gob in different sections of the machine the flexible motor controls there are a number of motors working in the machines then electronic forming control the bottle forming operation goes to this control then pusher system the glass is pushed the hot glass is pushed to a conveyor conveyor is continuously running from the hot end where forming takes place to the layer so this pusher pushes the glass from the machine dead plate dead plate is nothing which is static to a moving conveyor this is pusher next is the wire transfer wire transfer where there is a angle it is going in one direction the uh, where direction is changed 90 degree that is called wire transfer it is also a servo wire transfer then stacker and cross conveyor after the wire transfer it is the cross conveyor this is the main conveyor machine associated with the machine is the main conveyor then there is a wire transfer then the cross conveyor then stacker stacker stacks the bottles inside the annealing furnace so this whole thing is controlled through a plc again it is basically a proprietary item of the machine supplier configuration is done by them only the operation part of course is being handled by the plant besides this these are all centralized besides this there are certain handheld equipment available in the machines which can also bypass the centralized system and they can change it from the handheld system certain things can be changed next slide i have told you about this process there are two processes by which the bottle forming takes place one is called blow and blow process wherein the narrow neck bottles are formed and the other is pressure and blow process where the wide mouth bottles are formed these are interchangeable this can be changed the mold sets are there for each type for there are 11 components for a particular mold and mold equipment system 11 components are there now i will request subhajit i have sent him a video also i will request him at the end of this program to show this video that will clear this thing more the is machine there is a video i have sent it to you 5 minute video less than 5 minute video if we find time we can show it okay sir noted sir now the rc uh, is machine has two type two upon opposite side dead plates one side is called the blank side 
and the opposite side is called the glow side in the blank side the paddison of the bottle paddison means the outer line of the bottle takes place as well as the neck formation takes place it is in the inverted condition as you see from the drawing left side is the blank side the gob is the glass gob is drawn inside then there is a air flow blowing ingress of air then there is a counter blow from the bottom which forms the neck of the bottle then it is taken out as an inverted bottle then it is reverted back to the other side of the machine that is called the blow side one is blank side other is the blow side blow side it gets erected and in the blow side only blowing of air is taken place and bottle is shaped as desired so if you see the addition is it, it is basically concentrated bottle outer surface is of course created but inside there are molten glass inside which is not shaped clearly it cannot be shaped until unless there is a blowing of air and on the blow side the blowing takes place and the bottle formation completely takes place and that side the blow side ultimately pushes the bottle into the conveyor and conveyor brings it to the ultimately to the layer the next slide press and blow process here also there is a blank side and the blow side in the blank side instead of it is a wide mouth bottle in the blow and blow i have told you that it is narrow neck bottle in a wide mouth bottle instead of air the neck formation and the parison is taken place through movement of a plunger it is not the air that is the only difference between a blow and blow process and the blank press and blow process the right side is similar to blow and blow process blow side is similar blank side there is a difference because it is wide mouth next slide now we are coming to the end of this presentation i will brief you about various control and instrumentation facilities used in a glass plant we have discussed so many things already the batch house automation that is plc controlled then furnace control i have told you about the reversal system auto reversal control is a automatically controlled system after if i say it is 20 minutes it will happen after 20 minutes then air flow air fuel flow air fuel flow control with oxygen trimming and lead lead circuitry that also i have expressed exp, uh, explained that is called the combustion control of the melter then of course the burner management system electrical electrical boosting system i have not discussed i have not uh, included in the uh, presentation it is not required everywhere if the firing is in natural gas with a electrical boosting then only the electrical boosting system comes into picture otherwise not normally the natural gas fired boil, uh, melters are popular however because of the cost issue cost of course all the fuels have uh, costed very very high now nowadays fo can be used furnace oil can be used instead of natural gas furnace oil is having a higher calorie value than natural gas or a combination of the both that is the electrical system then the furnace pressure control i have told you there is an excess minimal excess air maintained inside the furnace it is slightly positive 
0.25 mm water gauge to 5.5 mm water gauge or so. Then molten glass level control, distributor temperature control, four hot product temperature controls, low pressure, high pressure, compressed air pressure control required for ice machines. And any layer control, temperature controls, ice machine PLC system with synchronized drives and having servo feeder, servo golf distributor, servo pusher, servo stacker, servo cross conveyor, etc. Then quality inspection and in quality inspection, there are camera based, multi camera based auto inspection machines, which can detect almost all the surface defects. Surface defects can be many. Air bubble is one. Nobody wants a air bubble inside a bottle. And for a cosmetic bottle, it is 100% rejected. If we find one, one bubble, the total lot is rejected because nobody wants to take it, take this risk air bubble then there is a stone on the surface of the bottle there can be bar swing here type of thing inside the bottle there can be cracks on the surface of the bottle there are a number of hundreds of uh, defects listed and almost all of these defects can be detected by multiple camera based inspection machines automatically and the machine automatically rejects the bottles also. The rejected bottles are collected inside the plant only for usage as collect crushed glass. Then all the uh, closed loop control system or open loop control system as arts would distributed control system or PLC or SCADA, wherever what is required. Then there are other primary equipment. We know everything that I have described. Orifice paste, venturi, temperature sensors, different temperature, higher. This is very high temperature zone. So the temperature sensors should be very, very off high range, higher range. Normally the B type thermocouples are used or art type thermocouples or S type thermocouples are used or fiber of the thermometers are used for temperature sensing. Then there are uh, pressure transducer, del uh, differential pressure transducer, temperature transducers and so on and so forth. Yes, so one, two was it, next slide. We have come to the end of this presentation. Thanks a lot. Thank you everyone for participating in this presentation. Uh, before that, I can start the Q&A session. Begangu sir, are you ready for that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So basically, uh, I want to conclude this thing. Uh, at the uh, Before vote of thanks, I will be uh, play this video. The first thing is that in a brief time frame, you have covered all the key aspects of the glass manufacturing process. And it has been incredibly enlightening. Previously, I have no knowledge about this field, but I have few knowledge and basic understanding about this process. The entire discussion has been captivating. We are now moving on to the QA session. So please don't hesitate to ask any question you may have. I think there are a few person is already raising their hand first uh, Devi Prashad Ghosh uh, sir is there you can ask your question Devi Prashad Ghosh sir it's probably sir, mistaken um, Mriyanko, I just have, yeah yeah I just have the uh, yeah I just have the thorough uh, uh, process uh, been uh, done in a glass industry only the thing is uh, i want to know that is the most important part is the annealing how the annealing is done 
that is the only thing uh in the at the end of the annealing process at the sorry beginning of the annealing process the temperature is brought up to a level of say 600 degrees centigrade or so there are there are uh, firing system throughout the different zones of the annealing furnace okay in the first zone the temperature is brought up to a level of 600 degrees 600 degrees centigrade or so why brought up because due after the formation of the bottles the temperature goes down to about 400 degrees centigrade or so then after that the conveyor brought brings it down to about 350 degrees or so so at the start of the annealing process it is brought up to a level of 600 degrees centigrade to make it uniformly di distributed outside and inside surface of the bottle then it is cooled down slowly in a cyclic manner to other different zones of an annealing furnace the number of zones depend on the requirement of the range of job will running in that particular machine okay and we can set it accordingly after when the temperature is brought down to around 100 degrees centigrade or so it is it comes out of the annealing layer and it is 100% hardened brittleness gun uh, brittleness gun trace no. is fully relieved okay th that i understand uh, that um, the annealing is done uh, the actually what i want to uh, know the wh how the annealing process is controlled that is the controlling system how it is controlled uh. throughout uh. and the uh, uh, reduction of temperature and the recrystallization yeah, of the yeah, yeah. There, there are right right there are automatic temperature control systems for each and every zone of uh, inside that annealing layer there is a burner and the burner is fi fired by natural gas and air combination and these are automatically controlled the set point is the temperature required so definitely the firing will be controlled okay 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 thank you thanks thank you we are taking next question from ashish dhas sir are you there ashish dhas sir are you there yeah can you hear me yeah yeah tell me it's loud and clear uh, okay good evening uh, midang migang koda uh, i am quite good junior <laughs> quite junior no issue you. no issue no issue you are more yeah. knowledgeable than now no 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 now the the uh, thing is uh, <clears throat> i never worked in any glass manufacturing uh, facility and never visited but i have a very good idea on this your presentation is so uh, in depth and very easily understandable okay so now one question i have rather two questions number one you mentioned that at the beginning that uh, that whenever the glass bottles are manufactured if there is a air bubble in it you are going to reject the whole batch now yeah it, yeah continuous process so how do you determine or how do you inspect it that there is a air bubble in at least in one bottle and sometimes the bottles are smaller bigger and the air bubbles could be smaller so what is the measurement uh, testing process right 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 the whole lot is rejected in case of only high end cosmetic bottles not everywhere only the bubbles which are detected are rejected but for a high for a specialty bottles or a high end cosmetic and perfumery bottles these are not at all allowed the rejection rate is very high in a perfumery and cosmetic bottles very very high the efficiency of a machine where in a cosmetic and perfumery bottle is running is hardly 35 or 40 percent that's why it is very very costly also the bottles they uh, export to brazil say us to 
other parts of the country, France, those are very, very costly bottles. The content of the bottle is less costly than the bottle itself. The perfume is less costly than the bottle. Yeah, that yeah, is the yeah. unique part of it. Now, now, I understood, I understood. Now the inspection machine is multi-camera based inspection machine. The, the camera catches all these bubbles and the size of the bubble has been set in the machine, which should be allowed and which should be rejected. For a cosmetic bottle, all the bubbles are rejected. I'm talking about the cosmetic bottles, not for all the bottles. The bubble which is visible, exactly visible for other uh, types of bottles, which can be uh, mass, mass market, consumption of mass market, those are not rejected the lot. We do not reject the lot. The inspection machines are capable of detecting all the surface defects. There are num num numerous cameras around the bottle and it catches the defect throughout the bottle. So that means that means the you, you cannot stop the process because once you are detecting a bubble in a product and already right. what has been already done, you cannot minimize the loss, right? Yes, it, it, uh, whatever the law, loss has been done cannot be minimized. However, there are many corrective actions. I have told you at the beginning that the distributor basically what what does distributor do? It refines the glass. And the primary responsibility of a distributor is to air trap inside the glass is escaped through the glass in the distributor. So they try to homogenize it, make it bubble free in the distributor itself. However, in certain cases, despite that, there are bubbles appearing at the fag end of the bottle production. Then there are many systems, quantity drain system is there. The four heart wherein the glasses are glass are drawn into, into the machine. The four uh, the quantity drain system is installed there itself. The glass is drained for quite say some time, say one hour draining, and see the result. There are there are all trial and error methods going on in the glass system. So this is one of the important things. Continent system is very, very uh, well known system in many of the uh, big manufacturers of container glass industry. And the major players, major suppliers, or major designers in the world, they always recommend use of Contidrain for removal of air bubble inside the glass. That will stop the production for sometimes say one hour or half an, half an hour or one an hour, half an hour, but that will ultimately stop the bubble formation. I think thank Ashish you very much. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Ashish Dosa get the answer perfectly, I yeah. think so. Thank you very uh, much. I'm going to... Thanks oh, a lot. Thank you, Thanks a lot. Uh, I'm taking next question. I think next Rise hand from the Dipendu Dotto, sir. Are you there? Dipendu yes, Dotto, sir. Okay. Yes, yes, please. Uh, yes, yes, I'm there. I'm there. Uh, so thank you. Uh, thank you, Migangu, sir, for this presentation. It was very nice. Thanks it a lot. Very enriching and uh, really helpful. At least uh, I could get an idea about how this uh, glass industry works. Uh, frankly, I have never worked in it. Although I had worked in chemical plants and petrochemicals, but I never worked in glass industry. Uh, so it was very nice. Uh, one quick question I had. You had mentioned uh, that it's very important to maintain the level of the furnace. Uh, yeah. Wh why was it so? Or uh, if you had answered, I had missed it. Maybe you, you can let me know. Okay. Okay. The level determines the uh, weight of the bottle. If the level is increased, the weight of the bottle will increase. 
that is the weight of the gob coming out of the machine coming out of the sorry forehead forehead ultimately delivers the gob into the machine the gob weight is 100% determined by the level of the glass if the level of the glass increases increases by chance the weight we have fixed weight is there is a calculation of weight okay it will it will change and the weight we receive will be different than what it is desired it directly relates to the weight draw is related to the level the pull of the glass is 100% related to the level as we increase the pull the level will decrease as we reduce the pull the level will increase okay. now right so this is the basically the reason it controls the weight in fact okay got it uh one thing maybe uh, the in fact uh, what what normally are the raw materials because uh, in the first uh, second slide you mentioned about the raw materials which will be coming and we yeah. hear about silicate and all those things but any specific yeah silica sand silica sand silica sand are normally used for the so uh, type 3 glass type uh, 3 glass yes yeah, soda lime glass silica sand silica sand is normal sand the brown sand available at the banks of the river and all oh, whereas okay. okay quartz i have mentioned quartz also mm -hmm. quartz sand that is in that is available as a natural uh, substance it is basically a my it my, it is a uh, i i should say it is it is found at the uh, it is got by the mining only it is inside okay so that is a very very important point because 70 to 75% sands are used for making of glass silica sand is normal sand which are used for the type 3 glass normal type 3 glass used for mass market but for premium market we have to go for the quartz sand which are available in the mines okay then okay. there are other many other additives and all that i have mentioned already okay yeah okay no thank you very much and uh, thank, thank, very, very thank you thank you dibendu uh, thank you i'm taking the next question from shomendra gupto shomendra gupto are you there mr shomendra gupto hello ha shunte pachen ha shunte hello ha 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 migan bota ami shomendra gupto bolchi दस्ती Dust free. It has been that is the that is the uh, uh, major project undertaken uh, during the say last ten fifteen years. Batch house was the the worst area of any glass plant, and that has been made dust free, complete dust free to some extent. Number two, the the people working in the batch house are not kept. permanently in that particular area for a very long period of time the silica is carcinogenic mm. so there is every chance they 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 it becomes a health hazard for them so these people are rotationally transferred to other departments that is taken care and it has been made 100% almost 100% dust free but 100% is very difficult to achieve the work is in progress okay 
Okay, thank so you. I think I think Shomudh Gupta sir has get their answer. Uh, I am taking the next question from the uh, Mr. Shridha to Shen Mojundar sir. Hello, Shomudh, you hear? Yeah. Hello. Oh, let me first convey my sincere thanks to Shubhuri and Nirankoda for conducting this nice and excellent session today. Thank you. Basically, one thing is that Shomanulu has asked the question of Shundur, that hazards are made. So, the second thing is that nuclear power plants are made by the dog testing and the argument. <laughs> not not exactly dope testing, but the health checkup, general health checkup, the lungs testing, etc. is taken place very very frequently. And the action has been taken. I have told you that every three years or so there is a policy now that every three years they will be shifted to other departments, other safe departments. Okay. Thank you. Nice. আর সুজিত কে অনেক থ্যাঙ্কস ফর কন্ডাক্টিং খুব ভালো ছেলে ও পিএইচডি করছে আমি জানি রাইট থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ আমার কথা ভালোই লাগছে ঠিক আছে আর নেক্সট क्वेश्चन আই এম টেকিং फ्रॉम সুদীপ কুমার শাহ স্যার স্যার আর ইউ देयर ইয়েস গুড ইভিনিং গুড ইভিনিং গুড ইভিনিং অল ভেরি নাইস প্রেজেন্টেশন আই এম অ্যাবসলিউটলি নিউ টু দিস গ্লাস টেকনোলজি আই हैव গট অনলি টু Uh, two things to know that what is the material use raw material for glasses the concave and convex specs we are using that glass is what is the raw, raw material and number two the uh, process the stages and the steps uh, that has been described in this full presentation whether uh, mm. this uh, this uh, specs and glass manufacturing industries for optical uses they use the similar procedure or there may be something common and something different if you mm. just highlight something about that uh, uh, let me tell you first thing first thing i have already explained that is uh, the major raw materials used for the basic glass is either silica sand or quartz sand then feldspar dolomite todas etc and for a type 1 glass for which the ophthalmic glass then uh, optical glass then uh, crts then tv panels are manufactured they are borosilicate glass borosilicate glass is basically a very common uh, costly glass apart from its use major use is in the pharmaceutical business pharmaceutical means life saving drugs like injectables injectables cannot be stored in a uh, container glass container which can be affected which can affect the content of the bottle in a, in the long run so it should be absolutely neutral absolutely neutral glass that's why boron or boric acid is added to the batch which makes the glass manufacturing for borosilicate glass very costly however as for as far as your second question is concerned uh, the glass container industry can similar can be similar to some extent to uh, say um, tableware industry tableware industry or similar other industries but perhaps not for ophthalmic glass ah uh, yeah this process yes. i i yes. don't think so i don't have main, yes. main idea major idea yes. about it but i yes. don't think so yes yes that is like thank you very much thank you very thank much. you thank you thanks a lot thank sir thank i'm next question I'm taking from the shushanto shah sir are there am i audible yeah absolutely audible i'm nikankota it was a very illuminating presentation as dipendu uh this is new to us uh, glass manufacturing uh, though i was uh, posted in baroda for a long time and okay. there uh, so <laughs> we used to go to that store there to get uh, you know the glass uh, utensils and all the i still yep, retain right. a full full dinner set we got at subsidized <laughs> from there 
So uh, my question is uh, regarding uh, uh, as we, as I saw the process as you have described, uh, I was wondering see there are chances of hazards and accidents. So hmm. I wanted to know what sort of instrumentation is applied to applied in handling these sort of accidents. There must be uh, some. Actually, uh, yeah, yeah. There are many many interlocks. I have described it in the last but one slide. I think there are uh, many interlocks like. Uh, fail safe mechanisms, different fail safe mechanisms. Then this lead lag circuit, which I have discussed in the uh, melter control system, melter temperature control. Then your uh, uh, other interlocks, in process interlocks. Then there are uh, number of interlocks in the belt conveying system because there is a weak chance of accident. I have seen a man uh was uh, mm, injured not injured one hand was taken out right his hand was um, uh, blocked blocked inside a conveyor or so so his hand has been pulled out from his body so there are many many interlocks in the belt conveying system pull cord switch like this so this is safety aspects has been taken care of safety aspects means the automatic safety aspects besides that there are of course the manual safety standards and all i don't know how much effective this is actually uh, i am from the oil and gas industry so there, right, we, there. what we follow is the osha standard so is there any yeah, specific but... standard which is followed yeah. in the glass industry oh. They are having all the certification, all the certification, EMS, OSA, everything. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. So I think there is no such questions. Uh, I can play this video if you allow me. The video has no sound, basically. <laughs> the video has no sound. Uh, is that in that time, Mango, sir, I will play that? Or... Yeah, yeah. It is only four and a half minutes, I think. Okay, I'm, I'm playing that. There is no sound in the video. That will make the thing more clear. Okay. The screen is visible now. I'm playing that. Audio is not coming. Uh, there is no audio in this video. Previously, I thought that there is something problem, but then I downloaded Probably it and there, there, is there is no audio. Okay. Okay. Probably there is no. Audio. There is a script below. It's a melting furnace. Then goes to the distributor and then four heart. The end of the four heart is called feeder.
inspection. It's a letter. Inspection machines. Over. It is an ad by some company, Tiyama. Okay. This is a right. nice overall presentation and this session is very good. At the last, I want to start by expressing my gratitude to Megang, Mr. Megango Bosak sir for delivering an incredibly informative session. Okay, that is a hand raised like by Show Mukherjee. Shubho, can you see? Okay, 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 okay. It is just coming there. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no issue. Show Mukherjee. Hello, sir. Uh, you can ask uh, Hello. Uh, uh, am, I, am I audible? Yeah. Hello. Uh, uh, sir, uh, our actor is Janbar Chilo, he glass industry, this is a maximum conveyor belt capacity. It uh, is uh, maximum uh, conveyor, conveying system. Er. Maximum capacity. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. maximum capacity. Mane ki, mane, mane koto rating er hoy, ki. Amar kono idea nahi, ki. Because e, I am from. Uh, 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 but ami onto the jani na. Eira kum kono rating er ne. Ami itu ko jani ja convert veil jagu na hoy. Ja jagle move kore bottle ke. Shigno stainless steel hoy. Jate kore bottle le kono rakom. Uh, marks bottle bottle at bottom of the 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 Okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, let me let me let me ex uh, explain it. Actually, every machine, every electronic IS machine is configurable the cycles of bottles produced cycle cycle of the machine that is the number of bottles produced per minute can be changed and i have told you about that there are many number of gobs cut at the same moment of time there can be a machine of three gobs and eight section so three gobs and eight section has to be fed by the gob distributor to all the three, all the eight sections. Means 24 bottles. 24 bottles. And if the cycle is say 10, 10 is the cycle, 10 per minute. 10 is very minimum. It can go even up to 15 or maybe more than that. 10 is the cycle, machine cycle per minute. Then 
8 into 3, 24 into 10, 240 bottles per minute is produced in that particular machine. I have seen machines producing 600 bottles per minute. Of course, they are smaller bottles, cosmetic bottles. And for larger and bottles. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please continue, sir. Please continue. Uh, for larger bottles, the speed has to be reduced, of course. The number and of sir, bottles. I want to start by expressing my gratitude to Mr. Miganko Goshak, sir, for delivering an incredibly informative session. It was truly enlightening. Furthermore, I like to extend my heartful thanks to RNC, sir, for his proactive role in coordinating today's exceptional tech talk. A special acknowledgement is due to Nirmal Murmu, sir. He is a departmental professor of applied physics now for his in invincible IT support, which was instrumental in making this program a reality. I personally uh, extend my heartful thanks to Shridhatushan Mondunda sir, Dev Bhattasharka sir, uh, JNB sir, and present head uh, KDS sir. Finally, I want to convey my sincere appreciation to all the distinguished guests and alumni who are invested their valuable time in being a part of this event and generously sharing, sharing their insight during the engaging question and answer session. Your presence was instrumental in enhancing the quality of our program. Thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night.